guess so. I'm ready. I am ready. Just texting. Just teletexting. Just. <laughs> I'm just going to do it quiz on bamboozle. Oh. <laughs> <Full> story. <laughs> we got the first. We definitely won't be the last. We'd like to welcome you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Not Another Conspiracy Podcast. My name is Ben, and in Detroit we have Mr. Dean Salter. Hello. And in York, home of the giant inflatable grenade, we have JJ Jackson. I saw that, yeah. That was very good. Hello. How are you, boys? It's a, a, a very obscure reference for people that don't know anyone who lives in York. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, grenade, the energy tablet thing do you yeah. have it in the states they yes, basically yeah, yeah, they yeah, yeah. i know the one you're on about anyway they put an inflatable grenade somewhere in york and that's it and that's the end of it oh it wasn't was like, it wasn't was an gonna... inflatable it wasn't an inflatable <laughs> grenade it was a hot air balloon oh right and in south that... go see we've got ben mills <laughs> yeah an inflatable and a, a hot air balloon is an inflatable yes. nah it's not it's um is it a blimp it's a it's hot a blimp, air it? propelled hot air, hot air propelled vehicle well, well I, was, okay. I was gonna say like i was gonna wait for ben to introduce himself and then go hold on a minute whacking great air, like balloon grenade what the fuck <laughs> happening in york come on excite me but yeah. oh, okay what random nah. place as well. did someone ping it <laughs> P ping it. No, no, Rich Rich sent me some joke about something to do with Call of Duty, but yeah. I just didn't get it. Oh, is that the, was, oh, that was the joke. Ben, ben also saw the joke. <laughs> you ping it. I've taken, yeah, I, I still, I, didn't, still didn't I get it. I didn't think you could ping grenades. First and foremost, though, before we go any further, I want to personally <sighs> apologise for such a late uh, episode since the last one. Um, life's changed. I have a nine to five. Working nine to five. You know, like... I can't, I can't help that. I need, I need the money monies, five. and I just have to do it. And as Ben had meant, no, no, sorry, as JJ had mentioned in the Discord, uh, it just messed up the synchronicity. Good word. Great in Scrabble. Uh, messed up the synchronicity of our And ties in very well with today's podcast as well. It does. Yeah. It does. Uh, Whatever uh, uh, synchronicity is. Uh, but uh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, it, I think it's either going to be a case of myself getting off work early to record midweek or it's a case of us getting together on the weekends and stuff but first and foremost we apologise I apologise um, or it's yeah, a case here. of everybody signing up to Patreon so Dean never has to work again and me and hey, Ben can get some that. sleep <laughs> yeah. so yeah, sign up to our Patreon wherever it is on the links but and the boys, stuff the boys it's in the link are, it's down below so. the boys in the UK are like, what time is it there uh, uh, quarter to ten so it's, a it's, a late, it's a late one, let's be perfectly honest. It is a bit of a late one. But uh, yes, we're here. We're, we're eager. We're eager to talk about Hellia. <clears throat> we're <Wait>. eager? <clears throat> Hellia, what's that I hear you say? I've oh, never heard of it until we, three months ago. Before we talk about Hellia, the. What doth Hellia beckon? Sorry, Ben, carry on. Before we talk about Hellia, I'd like to thank a few people um, who have gone out of their way to. Give us monthly money. It's not a lot of money, but it's still money. Mental. We have. Why do that? You mental. But thank you. Victoria Alice Allinson. Allinson Smith, Vicky. Yes. Well, Vicky, kill. What champion? She is she has become a official knacker. knacker. Uh, we Callum Wicks. Hey, Callum, dude, what a hero! He's also become an official knacker. Also, Ooh. little tidbit of uh, my past history I was once for two band practices in a band with Callum Wicks oh you were yeah back two. in like 2001 wow yeah I never, well I never knew that oh yeah we, it was a very oh. like short-lived thing two practices uh and then I'd also like to thank John Phillips although that's not his real name his real name is John Parrington uh, and he is a very good friend of mine. He uh, is a patron, and he's now an official knacker. Thank you. And this then, thank crazy. you, John. 
John Phillips, that is. Thank or, or you, John, John T. Phillips. John T, the big gay lion, uh, as I like to call him sometimes. Pride. And then and, and then we have DMRDR. Dust, who, Dustin. Dustin. He has not given us his name. Possibly. Yeah, he's he's uh, active on the Discord channel. Yeah, as well. yeah. But uh, if it, uh, I'm sure it is. Um, Dustin's my friend from over here in the States. Superb dude. Um it's full of knowledge. One day I want to get him on here as a guest. And that's going to be tough because he's in, I think, on the West Coast. Uh, I don't know if he's going <laughs> back to the East Coast. So, yeah, that's going to be funny. But I'd love to get Dustin yeah. on here as a guest because he's in incredibly intelligent. He's really forward thinking with a lot of this stuff. He would be a superb person to just to well, just to, to, to talk about these subjects that we do. But what we'll do hell, is like... we'll just we'll just rinse his knowledge and then pass it off as our own. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly that's what I was that's, thinking. Yeah, let's do that. Because <laughs> if he's incredibly intelligent, there, there we go, yeah. first He's one. a fountain let's of knowledge. Give, give him his so. own podcast. Yeah, yeah. let's but do his own one. We, we've got it's... our own remit here, which is to not know anything about fuck all. <laughs> it, we talk about it. And would... managed to do three hours on it. But that's even crazy that we've got people like... Oh, I'm so... Like being Patreons. Thank you. Like, that's and... absurd. It's crazy. It's still yeah. to this day, it's it, it amazing me that people And the perks, to be honest with you guys... The perks aren't really that good. <laughs> the perks Granted, are shit. We well, have, we yeah, we've missed that two weeks. <laughs> yeah. But they if still get this diff- podcast early. They still get this podcast early. So if you want this podcast early, next the next podcast early, then you need to become a patron because then you get it a day earlier. Uh, here's, <clears> here's one <laughs> perk that you can add on there. If you become a patron and you find out where JJ works, he will tattoo NAC on your finger or something like that. I will. I will. will. That is it. I yeah. will. And that is just in the, in the style patrons. of a mustache. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I like that idea. I want to get that myself. And <laughs> if you find out where I work or live or ever see me on the street, <laughs> I'll squeeze your wrists until your hands go <laughs> bright red like Prince Charles's. <laughs> and that's all I can offer you. That sounds like a threat. <laughs> Don't come up to me because I will that's... squeeze your wrists. <laughs> that sounds like something, that sounds like something straight out of the mighty, mighty booth. Yeah, like, well, so I'll squeeze shirt. your wrists. Uh, <laughs> I'm the wrist amazing. strangler. Don't come near me. I'm the wrist strangler. I'm the wrist strangler. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And that's, yeah, all, and that's the end of the podcast. Patreon, thank you. All of you. Superb. Yeah. Um, and, but not just that. The people that are on the Discord, we appreciate you so much. It's so much fun to kind of seeing everyone chatting and getting involved and putting their theories forward and kind of broaching different subjects and like interesting stuff. It's and, really fun. And like to be like, we don't do much. You guys do way more than we do. But well, yeah, one yeah. big shout out as well to Huxley for his involuntary and he does it himself he time stamps every single video that we do so huxley like mvp mad props to you dude you're insane when it comes to the idea of time stamping the topics of each uh part of the video couldn't be more grateful for something like that man like well appreciated and, and thank you to everyone socks. yeah yeah OG, og socks yeah. og socks if you still want to buy some of those I think they've got actually just dropped some new ones today, I believe. Yes, they have. Oh, they have. I can't um, wait till payday. I'm, I'm getting some. Absolutely. They're uh, ogsocks.co.uk. 20% off. Was it 20%? If you use it's the code. 20%. Yeah. N-A-C. 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 Into their discount. Yeah. But also a big thanks to everybody who's been keeping the Discord going. Especially, I think we've hit a bit of a dry patch in the conspiracy world. Nothing really... Nothing's really happened. There's no nonce in cabinets. Although there is new nonce, there is new nonce buyers <laughs> of in cabinets, Persian in cabinets. rugs. There's new Persian rugs that you can Persian buy with, chi- oh. with chi- oh. children oh. rugs. Oh. Yeah, I was children looking for are a Persian up rug. in them. I was looking for a Persian um, rug the other day, actually. Well, they've got them on uh, Wayfair. Seventeen thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine dollars. I don't want does, another he kid. Pay that much money. These ones are dead. Ah. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. already dead. Oh, <laughs> I don't want one that's already dead. Oh, no. <laughs> Jesus you like Christ. The, you like to smell the fear. 
<laughs> it tarnishes tarnishes the meat, doesn't it? It's, uh, but, <laughs> but it's interesting that you say that, JJ. That there's been it's been very dry when it comes to like the conspiracy world. Considering as well, we had. Uh, it seemed like the UFO train was just rolling and rolling and rolling and it weren't going to mm. stop. But then it, as soon as it got to a point where... It's coming out be, tomorrow. It's going to be... Yeah, lost. there was more that was allegedly going to be disclosed when it came to the retrieval programs that they were talking about. And now it's just fucking zip. Yeah. And it's, mm. it's really... But, and to the stars have just come out with their... Um, uh, investment program or their shares program. Second part, yeah. Part, yeah. Part Invest two. and maybe we'll disclose some more yeah. aliens. Well, I'm, I'm, obviously, I had, I've got Tom and TTSA like on uh, on the. I've got the bell rung on their like Twitter notifications and stuff like that. But like when that second round of investment came out, I think it was like the the lowest possible was seven hundred dollars, and I was just a bit like, what? yeah, just like ah, going straight to the bank. It was, it was fifty dollars when I invested, and I've got I four shares. I kind of I I could have done it, but I just decided not to. Like I was like, I'll look at that aside at the moment, but look at yeah, Ben's face. Nah, nah, yeah. nah, but what I'm saying, what nah. I'm saying is, it's odd that. Well, no, it's kind of convenient that they're like, oh shit, we've well, not that's the really price got the the ball has stopped rolling. The tram is no longer going on the tracks. It's stopped. Uh, oh, do you want to invest? Do you want it? Like, I was a bit like, Meh. it's because they got to make make more more videos, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, true. Got, someone wants to write a graphic novel. More videos. It's, mm. a, it's a shame. Like, we lost all our money putting out shit comics. We need to make it back. <laughs> <laughs> Secret machines. Yeah, They're not real. It's made up. Secret with a K. <laughs> no, it's a you know what it is. Stopped at the moment. They, they cancelled all because Angels and Airwaves tours all got stopped. He's like, well, I'm not got any income. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make that, some more shares, it? will ya? That's he's invest. One. He's invested in that guy on Bake Off who made that cake of him. He's, he's well, started like a cake Chris. company. <laughs> Who made a cake so, on a bake off? What? Uh, <laughs> British Bake Off, Dean. Uh, somebody, they had to make uh, cakes of their idols, and someone made one of Tom DeLong. It looked no, like a little no Chris. Way. <laughs> and no way. Some, somebody has like photoshopped it in every single Blink 182 picture ever. <laughs> Googled it straight away. <laughs> <laughs> There is no way, no uh, way that they put that. This year, yeah. right, so we're, we'll get off Bake Off and we'll get into the episode as soon as possible, promise. We promise. Oh, but this year, like normally, everyone on Bake Off is absolutely gangster at baking. This year, they're all absolutely fucking shit. Yeah, it's as if they learned <laughs> how to bake. do it over I lockdown. They were just like, I can make banana bread. So I'm gonna go on Bake Off. Have you Red have you bananas. seen this, this year? They That's the bananas bread. on toast, not banana bread, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> this this year they have to separate from their family for seven weeks as well. <laughs> seven weeks to like go on oh that show. Like, they're gonna up, start Tom. like stabbing each other with the fucking pinny fucking shit. Not pinnies. Oh, what are they called? <laughs> Rolling pinnies. They're gonna stab someone with a fucking pinny. I I'm sorry, right? We will go on to what we're talking about, but I've got to share it in the Discord. The picture of Tom with his arm around Mark and Travis. Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? It's so good. You should have seen the Freddie Mercury one. It was incredible. They were all pretty bad. Uh. No, stop. Hold on. No, I can't. I can't. No, I'll be here forever. Fucking right, so while Dean's, while Dean's uh, shitting his pants <laughs> over this, I've only just watched it, but uh, are you going to introduce us to the weird and wonderful world of Hellier, Ben? Oh. Yeah, right. I'm going to. Because you gonna, introduced me to it. At I'm going to tell the, the story of Hellier because um, I was listening to the last <laughs> podcast on the left, and they mentioned, uh, Henry mentioned um, Hellier. I have to plug my camera in, sorry. <laughs> so keep, keep talking. <laughs> Oh, is it battery going? Oh, okay, that's fine. Um, so, yeah, so he mentioned Hellier and he was talking about high, high, high strangeness. Uh, but I didn't really know what the what the documentary was about. But I really like high strangeness. Anything weird and wonderful, paranormal, like the X-Files is the greatest TV show. 
JJ's wearing the t-shirt today. Synchronicity, I think that is. If you watch Hellier, you will know what they mean. So I watched the first episode. And I was sold. It was brilliant. It was great. Yeah, it first was episode. So I so good. I'm like, the production value on it is brilliant. The editing on it, the coloring, everything on it is just a great documentary. It's intriguing. Yeah, I agree. Like, and then obviously hooked. Watched well, all. I watched all 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 the episodes in three days. The first time around. Yeah, and I, I, I really, was. The, I was the same. And you know, I, you told did, me to watch it. Yeah, and I absolutely loved it. I didn't question it. I was like, that was really interesting. I knew, like, I took it all with a pinch of salt. <clears throat> right. And then I was like telling people to watch it because it's like, if you're into the X Files, conspiracies, anything weird, you would enjoy this documentary. If this was a film, like a, a like a mockumentary, like a film shot like this, it would yeah. probably be one of the greatest like TV series ever. It's when you realize that these five people have yes anded themselves into <laughs> going to a cave and trying to right like resurrect pan <laughs> with a loaf of bread and a bottle of wine you're like oh now i've watched it a second time around it's <laughs> lunacy it's absolutely uh, mental i oh, so go. i was i was super super sold on it like when i first watched it really really sold on it for the first season even though the first season isn't as high budget as you you, you know the overall budget of it is fantastic yeah, which yeah. led me to led me to believe that it was fake. I genuinely yeah. watched it and I was like, and it didn't have the genuine tropes of these type of documentaries. No, no. and it was yeah. it was it was more like it felt like a Blair Witch Two film. It didn't feel yes. like Blair Witch One. You know, it felt yeah. like great, yeah. Blair Witch great Two. Comparison. We've got some money, and you know, like yeah. it's still a film and it's still you know fiction, but there is still mm. elements that it could be. You know, sorry, yeah, fiction. Um, mm. But then it was season two and especially the Discord group, which yeah, I've yet to be been swayed by the people on Discord. I always listen, but I'm yet to be like, I don't just, I, you know, I disagree slightly. Yeah. But after reading our Discord group and everyone absolutely rinse it, <laughs> I was like, am I the idiot? Am I just an idiot? Is everyone else like really fucking clever and I'm just a dick? Because I was like, I believe this. I think this is real. <laughs> like, right. but then I actually go back to the fucking thing, yeah. season two, and I'm like, time around. "How did I get? I got fucking, I got Bamboo blindsided." Room. Yeah, Do you know, no, literally, yeah. it's the honesty of the. I'm not going to say performances because they they are real, but They're what it is people, yeah. when you watch it back, you realise that you got sucked in like they got sucked in. Mm. You were sucked mm. into the story where, but they've convinced themselves from start to finish, that this is all happening. And they're like, but then things do come up along the way that are like, hold on a minute. Like, how did this happen? Like the woman in the prison in season two. You remember the her? She yeah. emailed them and then they contacted her and she was yeah, actually was, in prison. Yeah, and he was talking to her in the car, wasn't yeah. he? Like, yeah. You're like, oh, okay. But then she is talking like fucking about Kabul, mm. like the fall of Kabul. Like she's gone on a QAnon trip like, right yeah she, she's you hear yeah, her talk yeah. she's like going is the government they're killing babies like, i'm like, trying to tell you area 51 is in wisconsin was yeah yeah that's like, right like, yeah it's like it's so weird but like so so what did so you should think? we give it a basic rundown for people who haven't seen it yeah like i think right. what, I, this, what i was gonna this do is just, very <laughs> this is I, basically I, like those guys have done crack we're never listening I, to this shit again i need yeah. this as well from ben because i watched the first two episodes and i was like yeah i'm kind of convinced by this then i got to the third one and i was like fuck this this is horse right. shit I'm and gonna... then and then because <laughs> oh, sorry hold on and then <laughs> i just want to let everybody know that i'm not as informed as you guys are and so I started watching the last two episodes of season two just to freshen myself up. And even I was just sitting there watching this and being like, how ah, the fuck have they been roped into this shit? Like, like, so the, the, not you that, guys, the people in, yeah. in the, in so the, the documentary. So the spirit box thing they do in the penultimate episode is really interesting. But yeah, because they're doing that and they're, and they're listening to it. And the, the answers, he goes, like, they, they're saying stuff. And he's going, my name is Michael. Like, what's your name? And the guy goes, my name is Michael. You're like, how the fuck did that happen? Like it, it links up quite well, but then I, the more I watched that, the second time I watched that, like so, the first time I was like, 
fuck, that is just so creepy. How the hell did that line up? The second time I watched it, I'm going, well, that Tyler Strand guy wants this to be real, so he knows exactly what he's doing. And then he goes, oh, I'm an angel. Um, and then the Connor guy goes, that's so weird, because I gave him an angel as my an angel talisman as my little offering. I was like, well, that's why he said it. He <laughs> and so, I ate an angel cake last week. Yeah. So... It, <laughs> So it's all just like synchronicities is like the whole thing throughout the whole thing. And go, oh, it's another synchronicity, which is mm. to normal people, it's called a coincidence. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, it's I called know. coincidence. And if you're Stop looking it. for them, you're gonna find them. But Stop thinking of a word that make it makes it sound more legit. Yeah, I feel like called... they've taken they've taken the. I think we should go right back to the beginning, yeah, of, the beginning before we start that's... getting into this because yes, there's yes. A, there is ele- a lot of elements of this that I do believe in and like people yeah. this is one of these things people are like you, sh- you don't really believe in that I was like no I genuinely do but I believe it's the people in control of what the experiments are yeah and this is where I lose interest with this but let's go back to right. the beginning so I'm going to read the like a summary yeah. of each episode yeah. and then we'll yeah. talk about each episode because I think we've both watched the first two episodes <laughs> so the first episode uh, Dana and Greg Newkirk um Oh, actually, the, the beginning of the episode is Cole, the director, is talking about how he found out about the Kentucky Goblins, which was That's some, it. yes. So, and the Kentucky <laughs> Goblins was they're not uh, they're not a major league baseball team. They're not. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> they're, 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 <laughs> Got one hell of a pitch, that Goblin with Good his one. long gangly arms. Ah, ah, Kentucky <laughs> Goblins, you say? <laughs> I know of them. Um, so yeah, he, he <laughs> talks about how he listened to a podcast with Greg Newkirk, who and who's one of the main people in the documentary. It talks about an email he received from uh, David M. Christie, saying, like, and it was a mysterious email saying, "There's yep. some go-, and the, the voiceover they use on the documentary screen, there are some goblins, they're in my garden, they're scaring my children. <laughs> I was just yeah, I was they're just, looking through I, the windows." The dogs are barking. Like it's just like it's, it's so Hollywood. It's, like it's, it's funny that you mentioned second time rounds because, and I mentioned to JJ or I mentioned to you guys in general that there wasn't any any genuine tropes of like shitty yeah. documentaries. But of course, they had to throw the Mickey Rourke sound alike, which there. is from Bob you know Lazar, I mean? isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's there's a lot of um, the guy <laughs> who does the Bob did the Bob Lazar one. There's a lot of sing- similarities between Carl Pfeiffer, the director yeah. of Hellier. And what's his name that done? Jeremy Corbell. Jeremy Corbell. This so, like they got the same beard. <laughs> like they look at they look. Yeah, Jeremy the same Corbell same. You know wishes his budget was as good as fucking Hellier. Right. He was yeah. like, he Hellier. looked at the script and were like, uh, Hellier, ten thousand dollars. And he looked at his, it was like ten dollars. <laughs> He's like, oh, well, I'm gonna make it exactly the same. He's like, yeah, man. Right. While rubbish. I was watching the first episode, Rachel even sat there and said she was like. That, isn't that that guy from the Bob Lazar one? I was like, no, no, no. And she was like, no, it is. Like, even it's, she was, yeah. like, convinced. Like, He's got your he haircut exactly. as well, Dean. Well, no, I don't see oh, mine all the way back, do I? Yeah. Don't try and throw me in that. You're don't one of them. Throw You're me one of them, you are. Bus. Anyway, so <laughs> yeah, he's, he got this weird letter from David M. Christie, and then David M. Christie sends him a few pictures of, like, some footprints and some blurry pictures of a goblin peeking out behind a tree, which is clearly just... <laughs> A bit of white on a bit I of black. Know. I was just like, Fuck he's like, oh, can it make it out? He's peering out from the side of the tree. Yeah. No, it's not. It's, doing, it's, it's nothing. It is a picture it, it of has, fuck all. It, it's it's temple is even, concaved there, and you can't see underneath its chin. I was like, piss off. Even Stop then, this. the first time around, I was like, that's not a picture of anything. Like I knew straight away, it's like, okay, that's the, the the goblins thing. Straight away for me was like, it's not real. Like yeah. this is. But it because ben, like, ben was like, everybody knows goblins are invisible. You can't take <laughs> photos of them. <laughs> you can't picture a goblin. <laughs> um, but I think because up until the end of the episode, that's when you kind of twist and go, oh, it's not about the goblins. Like It's about the mystery around being led there. So anyway, right, right. they go to Helia for the first trip without anyone. This is, this is done before Carl Pfeiffer gets involved. They, Greg and Dana Newkirk, they film their little trip to Helio. They find nothing. A um, few people say, oh, we've seen weird shit. We've seen weird, seen weird stuff. They think they find David M. Christie's house, uh, which later on they find out it was owned by 
a guy called David M. Parsons, which is kind of weird. That is pretty weird. Yeah, that's. I just think that is just a miraculous coincidence, to be honest. Synchronicity, like, my, my, Dean. My, my it's a synchronicity. Called my dad's called Paul. My father-in-law's called Paul. Like, what? I think Are before we go too far, <laughs> it's, the, it's the two guys, the two guys who they interview. So basically they interview some two old blokes who are like complete hicks. So they're like, you know, they're, they're, they're like, they don't believe in gay marriage or black people oh, well, or anything like that. Comes, yeah. yeah. And they, you can tell that when they ask him about the mystery surrounding it, I know Ben's going to go on to this, but I feel like he's brought those guys, like the locals into it. Yeah. Yeah. They're talking about the, the goblins, like, and they, the guy's like, oh, have you, do you know anything about goblins? And the guy's like, I don't know nothing about nothing. And then the other guy's like, me neither. But like looks at him and then he's like, well, I do remember when we were kids, used to hear screaming come from damn caves. And it was like, what? Like, why are you talking about this? Do you know you, that part? So uh, that part for me straight away was well, like that, that some validation like, on this. Yeah. And right, they, made, yeah. they definitely go back and they, like the woman in the prison, she says about the screaming. And then they re there's yeah. a thing, um, the guy like pulls out this book and he goes like, the things that you'll hear when you're experiencing something paranormal or something weird happening, uh, uh, doors opening and closing, children screaming. Like these are the sounds that you would hear if you're having a paranormal, paranormal like, experience. experience. Oh, okay. the, oh, kids so screaming, just, doors slamming, just as stuff a, like that. A quick, a quick <laughs> sort of offset thing of this. Um, my... Uh, apprentice today was talking about because we were talking that we were going to do this today and she was saying that you know like cats meow because they're imitating children yes, Cat, yes. cats don't actually meow that's the noise of them imitating kids yeah yeah and they're saying that the reason that is uh why it could be something to do with paranormal activity is because it's other entities imitating humans Ooh. but the uh, the earliest form of like human language is like meh meh like, you know like yeah, yeah. like a wendigo so that, they can't basically yeah so they basically can't which they do mention a wendigo right or windigo yes. or whatever it's called yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um which i thought was really interesting yeah, but yeah, yeah those going back onto those two guys they're so daft that they, you know, they're like even dafter than the people doing this documentary, and that's pretty fucking daft. You know, it's like pretty stupid. Right, right. Um, they are like, they as soon as one of them lets go of him, like, oh, we can't tell everyone about that, can we? And the other one kind of goes, yeah, I guess we should tell them. And then they both start going, oh well, we did remember this time when yeah, we were kids I and there was children part. children and the funny thing about it was they were both very reluctant to say anything and then as soon as one of them did the other one did yeah which kind of makes you think that a lot of them kind of go yeah they, we don't talk about that shit right and they came across fairly genuine as well as yeah. far as mm. and then like i mean their faces were really blurred out they could have been the goblins <laughs> no they one did. really knows <laughs> <laughs> can't so, see goblins <laughs> um yeah so they, 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 they faces. Anyway, they visit Helia before the documentary starts, like five years before, I think six years before they make the documentary, they'd already visited. They'd found what they thought was the house, uh, but they didn't find anything about goblins. They came back and they gave up on it. They stopped They stopped it. They carried on doing their, yeah. their other stuff. And they got an email from a Mr. Terry. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Terry R. Wrist or Terry Wrist. Right. <laughs> All right, terrorist. What? Like, I what? remember hearing that, and even I put it together. I was like, "Fuck!" And then he got, and is that someone bringing up Mo Sislak's bar, isn't it? The, the, Terry T wrist. This, this great guy is like going Terry wrist, terror wrist. Like it's like, what, like no one else has worked that out, mate. Like is it you just Terry wrist? Like, Mister Bill Oddy, what's rude about a body? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know whether that's just. I don't know whether that's just our British humour. But when he was like Terry Wrist, I remember watching that when I was like laid in bed, just like this, and I was just like, "Fuck off!" Like, <laughs> I am not having that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, "No way!" And that was. And I, that that, that was, would have it, 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 straight away for me if someone had emailed me going. Terry Wrist. I'm like, well, it, it, bullshit. <laughs> it, it would have gone into junk for me straight away. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> But it, it, 
all day long. He's going, follow the number. You were so close. Why didn't you? Da, da, da. You were so close when you got to Helia. So I'm like, okay, they never put this out that they went to Helia. They never said the town or anything. So this guy's the name, which is what I'm like, how does he know that they went? And then he goes, follow the numbers. And then they completely ignore that. They think those numbers are credit card. So they take them and then you're like, oh, no, it's not credit card. Well, why would it be a credit card? Mm. Uh, and then it's like coordinates. And then obviously on the last ever episode. Yeah, it takes two, them six episodes to fucking work it out. At the end of it, they go like do lally with the numbers and just like. Like, like, actually, if you had, but we'll get onto that. That's the end, and that's like sure. silly. But yeah, so they use they get these coordinates, and it leads them to the coordinates of where they'd just been for a like a to look for alien a secret alien bunker in a cliff face, uh, Black Rock. But that's for like another thing. So that, and they're like, oh my god, that's where we've just been. Synchronicity. This is synchro oh, mysticism. Oh. That's not a real thing. Anyway. Uh, yeah, stop it. <laughs> then, but then. Ben, 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 let's roll this back a little bit. I wish we could do like a, I wish we'd have done an episode straight after it and done this episode now. Because me and Ben were like chatting about it for ages. It's like, oh my God, it's so good. Like, it's like every, everything for me and you was like, oh my God, it's a synchronicity. Oh my God. <laughs> it's and now we're just like, fuck them yeah. lot. Fuck like, him. But I watched, I watched it, and I was just like, "Fuck this whole shit!" I was like, immediately, I was like, "I'm not buying this." Oh, lockdown was tough. I, <laughs> you know, it's that's what it was. Is that like, we're like, well, it's something to believe in, and content. And I, I content. do not not believe all of it. Yeah, I do not, I not believe all of it. But I think it's how they got to the some of those moments and some of those synchronicities and how they led themselves down the, they literally led themselves down the garden path to like whatever they did so i i was reading a documentary uh reading an article sorry about that that couple the two people who did it yeah mm -hmm. and Greg it and goes on to the it goes on to the i'm not sure if these were the real names of them but it goes on to like the warren you know oh, the yeah, warren yeah, 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 the from Conj with, um conjuring yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Well, they yeah, were, so, they were a, a they lot were of people, outed, weren't they, as, yeah. um, as shysters? But, well, the snake oil salesmen yeah. to a point, yeah. weren't they? But yeah. the, I think one of the things was that they were basically trying to get their finger in as many pies as possible in the hope that one of them would become a real thing or people would get on board with it. Yeah, yeah. And if you go into the background of the people who did this Hellier documentary, they run a travelling fucking... Yeah, like oddities, oddities show yeah. or something they do yeah and i mean it's but basically I I like it's going back to like people. the 1800s like look at this old stick it fell yeah, off I the mean, last tree a, of the last witch. indian she's reservoir a, she's a witch and she's a wiccan or a hedge witch but I, I i don't think those two i i i think they just want to believe so much they're not like i don't think they're trying to screw in on over i don't think they're trying to um they're not to cash in they're not trying they, i mean they've cashed in but yeah. I don't think ah. they don't be don't think they're nefarious. I think they right. crashed in, at, but they do genuinely believe and they want something to be happen and to happen. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't think the Hellier documentary would have got that long because they just wanted something so bad. Mm. So here, here we go. <laughs> first thing, this was the first thing, right? I've known about spirit boxes for a long time. Like we did one when I was a kid and we did it the old school way by literally just scrolling back and forward through yeah. hit, a, FM and HM. Um, yeah, we just did it back and forward. And you know, you, you pick up stuff, but I mean, that's the point. We'll go on to what it actually is. Oh, in fact, I'll, I'll tell what it is now. now so basically it's a, it's a random, a random selection of uh, radio shows. Radio but the, the digital yeah. one goes through all frequencies. It doesn't just go on a scale of whatever, 80 to 100. Yeah. Where, so first thing, and basically what the point of the, uh, what the point of the thing is that you would go into some sort of deep meditation and you would listen out and the words that would stick out you as the person doing the spirit box would reply with the you would say the words that stick out so if you were like there was a radio guy going good morning tell it and you would you heard it as you were flicking through you'd be like morning television oh yeah. well, i don't know why anyone would be saying that on radio but um but uh, obviously all right okay sorry i haven't explained this very well either somebody who's not listening to it is asking the person who is listening to it 
questions. Yes, yeah. But he can't hear them. He, he can't, yeah. So like yeah. A, a channel, a spirit yeah. channel yeah. or whatever. So that's what it is. But the first thing that I noticed at the, and I, I can't find it now, or whether I've gone on it afterwards, when it, it kept talking about spirit boxes and spirit boxes, and it kept saying, oh, it's a specialist device, it's a specialist device. I'm almost certain it's the end of the episode where they first introduced the spirit box. It gives you a web address at the end where you can buy spe specially made spirit boxes, and it's, ah. by one of, it's by one of the guys off Hell yeah, of And I don't know if it's on his website. And it's, but they even say that there's only five real ones in the world. Oh, there's they, five, they say, no, it's five specific ones made by this guy that was researching. By one guy, and they're saying that they're the ones they that are like, one, they're they're possessed, they and they have one of them. But five. then Greg's Spirit Boxes, twenty nine ninety nine. I think Spirit Boxes are a load of whole shit, to be honest. And I've been lucky enough to go on like a ghost hunting thing um, with one of my work like places back in the UK. And I generally think that most of those people are peddling and peddling and they're just yeah. full of shit. I had one guy come up to me and was like, well, we captured this uh, ghost on one of our seats. We, we've got like a, we've installed security cameras in like certain like places and there was a bunker in like Shoebury Ness or something like that. And, like, and we captured like this and he showed me a picture of a ghost that was clearly photoshopped and it was even watermarked in the corner. And I didn't have the fucking heart to do it, but one of the guys I worked with and he was just like, so why'd you put the watermark and why is it so like pixelated there? Like it's a, like it's a really overused JPEG, and he just didn't know what to answer. Oh, she's use a fucking boxes. tiff. You, you use the JPEG because she needs a tiff. <laughs> they were doing table tipping and everything and all this uh, shit. Like, right, going, so oh, yeah, can you move this? And then they were like spirit boxes. I was like, oh fuck this. I was like, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm done. I'm going. I'm going to one in uh, Thackeray Medical Museum um, at the in on Halloween. Oh, and it's just, yeah. It's meant to be amazing. Like, I can't fucking... I literally can't wait. There was another but group I, that we were with that were, like, fucking well into it. And they were, like, right... Yeah. You know, no, you know that we would be... We would make us... We would bring up... Put ourselves in that situation. Just be so into it. If all three oh, of us did mate. it together. Like, I'd oh love to God. do it with you guys. Like, <laughs> it's oh, all real. Our shit and yeah, like, like, all three of us just picking the table <laughs> Picking a tape. Oh my god. Like, on the Ouija the board, they're just like, not another conspiracy <laughs> podcast. OGSocks.co.uk. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Patreon.com slash not another conspiracy. Sign up today. Oh man, I've got to make a trip home. we got to make that happen. Oh. <laughs> If, if there's one thing that's come from oh, from watching Hellia again is that I still want to make something like this. I want to create a documentary that's... I, I do too, absolutely, I because be... I want to put myself in the feet of... Or in the shoes, sorry, of those sort of people in that yeah. environment. Like, I want to be able to go into it and be a sceptic. Because be... they... They kind of sold it that they had some skeptics in the room, like Carl and Connor were meant to be these skeptics that were like, you know, they know a lot about it, but they don't believe everything. Like they're the impartial, and then like they just believe everything and go, "That's right, that's true." Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but he, he did that. All. Sorry. So as a, because I only managed a couple of episodes of this as a, a probably like an audience member uh, to you guys. The main premise of what they're hunting for is like this underground cavern where these goblin things for the first two episodes, and then it's right. it's gone. Yeah, they don't. That, then, that disappears pretty quickly. That. Yeah, I was gonna say like, whatever happened to that? <laughs> like, they basically they have no they have no trace of the guy who contacted them. Yeah. They go they go like five hundred miles out of the way to go to this one place, get defla deflated, and then. And then nothing happens. But the thing is, as as a viewer, you're thinking, yeah, oh, yeah, nothing happens for one episode. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's like five years, isn't it? There's like, probably some it, troll yeah. on 4chan just laughing his ass off somewhere. Like, what, an, actu an actual stuff. troll is like, ah, <laughs> goblins don't exist. <laughs> we live under bridges. <laughs> if only they'd gone to the bridge <laughs> instead of the caves, they would have found us. I managed to get these tickets a documentary. Like, I, yeah, it, 
obviously they've gone, <laughs> they've got into it. They've gone, well, we've, we've started now. So are they just doing paranormal investigations? That like, is well, that yeah, it? but it is kind of like it's like a paranormal investigation that leads to another paranormal investigation that leads to another paranormal investigation, which leads to a clutching at straws, basically, uh, like it, it, pinning <sighs> pinning all the strings together in some way. Like yeah, every, and they are yeah, it's that it's exactly that. There's pinning red string around a room. There's even a scene in the second series where Connor has got his kitchen is covered in red string. <laughs> is he like, what's his name from All Sunny in Philadelphia? Yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, it's exactly like that. <laughs> 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 Fucking love it. I, I, you be, I, I'm very, you know, you don't know much about bird law. So, um, <laughs> the, so back to the, the, the time scale of the thing. The second episode, they go to Hellier again, but as the full team this is where i tapped out yeah this ep the end of this episode Nothing, but they I don't find out. anything they don't find anything like no, no one says anything no one says they've seen anything it's it's like they, they even say like oh it's been a disaster but then they do the spirit box for the first time and and i was sold yeah i, I was do you know what i was <laughs> I was. No, I lie, was. They got me there. <laughs> it was kind of like it was interesting, and like they they said like a few names that came out and stuff. But you're like, actually though, if you're the person listening and you're already deep, this is after the watching it a second time round and and really thinking about it after being super excited about it. And I do recommend everyone watch it. Don't just go, oh well, they slagged it off for an hour or whatever. <laughs> <For> an hour. <laughs> but. It's, I still enjoyed it and I enjoyed it the second time I watched it. I enjoyed it for a different reason because it was like, I was thinking, oh, this is all great material for the podcast. From a filmmaker's perspective, I bet. And from, yeah, from, it. from, from, like, from a film, I was like, actually, that's, you know, fair play to them. They went out and did it. And and I, I say it a lot, I don't go out and do the stuff I want to do. And they did it. They went out and did it, which is good. But they already had an audience because they already did yeah, the yeah, weekend, yeah. weird weekend, weekend weird or whatever it is. So they already had an audience and they were already doing and stuff. And the one thing I appreciated about it, sorry, I'll let you carry on, is, and I mentioned it before, they didn't have the typical tropes that you get with these fucking mm. styles of documentaries yeah. where they try to ham everything up beyond belief. It did come across honest. And I like that. I think that's what I, although I tapped out, I was just like, I can't have this. It, yeah. I, it so did just you, wasn't. <laughs> sorry, go, JJ. Did you tap out actually at episode two? Yes. Wow. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> We're I, like I, 45 I, minutes into this and you tapped out episode two. Yep. Oh my God, it gets... Well, I'm going to go <laughs> I'm gonna go back and finish I it think off. You because do, yeah. I, I thought think... you were just going to go, I'm going to go now and finish the podcast. <laughs> you two finish it. I've had a long it. day at work. <laughs> so it's, a, it's, a, it's a episode two where they start making connections, like just random connections actually, yes, to yeah. the Mothman and Alan Greenfield and uh, Secret Cypher, the Euphonauts. But yes. the, so Secret, Secret Cypher, the Euphonauts, they use basically throughout the entire two seasons as like a cypher okay. that they can use. The, do you know what, what, how they made that connection? Oh, don't. The, the guy just said Euphonauts in one of their emails to him, to Greg. And then, uh, and Terry, and also Terry Wrist was the no. name of the pseudonym in one of the. Uh, oh, it's in the book, isn't it? In the book. Yes, yes. So, yeah, so Euphonauts is used in an email, I think. Is Euphonauts. JJ, do they use the word Euphonauts in the email? Um, or is it just Terry Wrist that is the link to. I believe the it was just Terry Wrist. See, <laughs> that's even worse then. So, they basically, the only thing that links the. The whole. I hope that I'm saying this right, but it's, it's either two things or one thing that links Secret Cipher of the Euphonauts that they use throughout as like a, a like a linking thing to to make these connections. Is that it's Terry Wrist is the name yeah. that they use, and the, that was the used in the, the author yeah. used a pseudonym in his story. Yeah, which is Alan Terry Wrist, who also went missing. Like they didn't contact him. Again. I, I'm also. Well, they, did I they even they contact did, him again? I think I Alan Greenfield, they met Alan Greenfield, did they, in the second season? And I think it was implied that he might have been Terry Wrist. But then he said, no, I'm not Terry Wrist. And Terry Wrist is real and shit like that. I, I, that I, I'm sorry, but when I first heard Terry Wrist, I was just Oh, like, yeah. I just wish that... Fucked. 
it all just I was like, seems. Ring up Moe's Tavern, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's it, yeah. So that that obviously is like one of the main reasons that it all, like it, it's those connections that the first time around you're like, I can see how they got there, but then you watch it again, you're like, I can't see how they got there. Actually, <laughs> yeah, like I was because I was sold horseshit. the first Second time. Second time round, this is horseshit. <laughs> yeah. It's it's just an endless like an an epi- Every episode is just has just got a cliffhanger. Like, and it doesn't matter. It's there is literally cool, no content for forty five minutes, and then the last five minutes has got like, oh my god. So. I, I don't yeah, know how far you've got, the ben. Whole like, I don't know how, how far do we go with this? Because, like, none of us are sold on it. And we're all like, ah, well... Well, this, cause cause there are things it that I'm is. sold on. It's that... And I'm going to say that, I think, JJ, I think you're... It's those fucking balloons. Mm. That was weird. That is weird. The balloons. Elaborate, yeah. please. <laughs> so, throughout, like, the throughout like the season, they just keep... Everywhere they go, they stumble on, like, a deflated helium balloon or... Right, so and they're all let's be honest, positions. spiky fucking trees, balloons, like there's nowhere yeah, for them to go until they explode and then they fall down. Yeah, yeah but, but they, only find, they only find two they or three. Do- ah. <laughs> yeah, right, one thing. Right, this. okay. <laughs> so what Ben's talking about is they, they talk about all these synchronicities. The balloons have nothing to do with anything. It's nothing to do with helium or balloon. It's just the fact okay. that... All their groups yeah, the blue start star, finding wasn't balloon. It? Right, that was blue it? star, right. and they found a. There's something blue star was mentioned, and then they found a blue star balloon, and that's right. how it started. And oh wow, look, it's a blue star balloon. That's weird. And then, but there's a guy. That, it's like this is where I was like, man, this is a bit fake. He's walk. He's walking just down a hill, filming <laughs> nothing, and then he's like, whoa, what's that? A, bl- a balloon. Like, why were you filming walking that? You know. Like when we talk about like you've been framed. Oh well, yeah. well not that we yeah. talk about you've been framed. Happened to be <laughs> conveniently yeah. filming this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Weddings and stuff that's expected. But when like why are you filming like your kid just running around the living room randomly on your VHS recorder where the tapes cost forty pound per tape? Yeah, yeah. yeah. why are you why Watch are you doing? Watch out, that? trotters! Up Whereas, out. Like <laughs> they find they find this like uh, I don't know the balloon thing, but the balloon thing stems from something else, right? The synchron, the big synchronicities that yeah. I was just like this, the end of season one, like so obviously you didn't get there, Dean. This is how fucking ridiculous it is. The the big reveal at the end of season one was in the spirit box when he was doing it, he saw a big bean tin. Oh, <laughs> and oh, then he went no, he went no. to a cave, he went to a cave and he saw a, an empty baked bean tin. Of course he did. And that, and that was it. That, like, he was being spoken to by the I mean, ancient Ma- Mojave I, tribes. But, and, but then apologi- there, were, there, was, there was another synchronicity with Sorry, it. sorry. I have to apologise to our audience because I should have watched all of this anyway. It was fucking tough getting to that second episode. I'm going to go back and watch it. But again, it was quite difficult with work. It's fine and, because we watched it and we can, yeah, so we uh, can give you the lowdown. The, 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 baked bean the ba- the bean The baked bean The baked bean tin... <laughs> But then he did find a reference to a baked bean tin in that secret cipher, the Euphonauts, as well, though, didn't he? But if, like you say, if you're, if you've constantly, like the chances are, if you're, you're looking for something, you're gonna, you're gonna find, find it. it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like what we were saying before about uh, if you buy a yellow car, all of a sudden every fucking yeah. yellow car that goes past you, like, oh my god, another yellow car or I, a yeah. brand of car or my ST. I bought a yellow oh. ST over here in the US, and everywhere I go now, I see Ford Focus STs driving everywhere. Yeah, and you, exactly. And those sort of cars aren't common around here, and they've all got this like it's like we're all part of some club. You see an ST, you wave at them. It's really weird. And I do st- that with minis. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I stopped a, a set of traffic lights, and this guy pulled up on the opposite side, and he sat there and leant out his window and went just pointed at me and I, I undone my window and just went and then he just drove past in front of me going <laughs> that was it he went, are you the cut of that podcast <laughs> I don't know why he was from weird Bradford Birmingham or something but, yeah. <laughs> Pod- podcast but, yeah, but anyway yeah right so it's these, big, it's these fucking big bean tins are yeah. like and the thing is they said I'm pretty sure they said big bean tin no they say any, any tin that doesn't have a label tin. on it they just say tin alright okay but it's tin can. The they call it a tin can. 
So they go they go to the entrance of this cave to kind of channel whatever Something. they're they're basically asking the universe to give them an answer to what they've been doing for the last six episodes. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Why have we been spending all this money on traveling around when we've learned nothing? And they go there and the guy's like, oh my God, a big bean tin. That's the tin. That's the tin can. That's from the tin I first. saw because, in my dream. Because people in rural areas don't happen to be like camping out in the forest hunting and take yeah. convenient. They're like, there's nothing else here, just this tin. Cold. Like, it's. Oh, yeah. I just can't grasp that. I'm, I'm sorry. I'd be like, no, it's not a synchronicity. It's not even a co yeah. coincidence. Well, and they, they, they go on about synchronicities almost constantly. Is this the only thing that links everything together is that right, it was yeah. like a coincidence. And then they go into like synchro mysticism and they, they go. What is well, that? So it's basically what? if you think so synchronicities, obviously they, they say this. I think this is an episode final episode they say that the synchronicities if you start seeing a lot of synchronicities around you then you're part of a magical ritual and that's part of the magical ritual is that you're you're part of it you're involved in it it's begun the all these synchronicities are just the little happening nods that you know reason. something's happening and you're involved I can't, no, I just, no. so if you start seeing a lot of coincidences someone's doing oh. a magical ritual on you or with you but it's a lot of hermeticism and stuff and hermeticism and Felmer and all those yeah. kind of... No, I don't want to tie those groups together, but it's a lot of the... And then now a lot of the New Age Christians is all about 11-11. Like they say that an angel's looking at you like, well, you're oh, going to see that. that. You're yeah. going to see that at least once a day. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why the 24-hour clock. That's why the 24-hour clock. I can't grasp don't have to that see sort it. of stuff. Like... It means nothing like baked bean tin. Yeah, you and, read it and you know what? It's it, it's different times. Like it's not eleven eleven at the same time for everyone. Like no, it's so not. it's a load of horseshit. It's and like the people horoscopes and all that shit. What just oh. because your parents fucked at a certain time of the year? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, where are they gonna fall out here? No, oh, here we go. Where, where are gonna fall out, Dean? <laughs> I. That's another I time. Actually, though, right? I'm big on that's that. That's an episode. Big. That I'm big on episode. that. I am big on that shit. Like so, I'm massive on it. <laughs> but so we we basically yeah. What where we got to was the end of season one. They find the baked beans in. I don't think really much else happens in season one apart from that. Really. Um, so I tapped out with oh, all the information. Oh my god! I needed. My oh, beer can. Oh. My beer can just turned into a baked bean tin. Oh, you've been doing that. I noticed that you had that for ages. I'm like going, oh, I mentioned that. I'm not even going to acknowledge that. I know, it, it's, over, it's not even open. He's just got like a... I thought he was like... Oh, oh, he's it. That's it's not even taken. baked beans. It's potato and leek soup. The joke's on you. <laughs> oh, my God. If you take the letters of potato and the letters of leek and you add them all together, you get... Hello, patat. All right. So, season two starts, and they, season two starts been before. Been doing it for so long. See, I know. I, you not noticed it? I'm drinking from the big, no. the fake bean. I was like, I'm not even going to acknowledge it. It's, it's so silly. And if you're, so if you're listening to the podcast, JJ has been sitting there sipping, fake sipping from a closed beer, like can, tin can, for about 15 minutes. Beautiful. And, it, and oh, I, I love it. Oh, I wish I had set out. I was going to leave it as a little trick, a little that Easter egg. Super, a little that Easter egg. Superb content. God. That is superb content. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, so, so yeah, we're on this season start, two. Season now. two. So season two, they started filming about a month before season one came out. Uh, because I don't know, something happened. They got an email um, from Amazon saying everyone loved it. Oh no, because season no, one hasn't come, come out yet. So that's what I think. That lends a little bit of credibility to the to the to the things that were happening to them and the, the emails they were getting. They right. think. Um, Basically, nothing happens again um, for, <laughs> for for ten episodes this for, season. For, 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 it, this ep this season was slightly it's a longer. Season. This was ten episodes but this season. And Jeff Bezos just has way too much money. That's basically yeah. what this is all about. Yeah, I think what had happened is they'd sold season one to Amazon Prime, 
Be, and they were like, you can do a set. Here's the money for a second season. Start yeah. it now. Yep. Um, and this is when they start getting away from um, goblins even more. And they start talking about Pan <laughs> as in the, go- the, the green pan? man, Pan. So, uh, pan the green man. The green what? man, Pan. Pan the green man. Pan. And we're not talking about the Jolly Green Giant here, are we? <laughs> no, Which is, this is where it became super interesting for me. Yeah, but this is when, this wh- is for me, was when I went, oh, I understand now. Like, it's for, like it's a modern pagan thing, isn't he, Green Man? Is it no, it's thing? ancient, like ancient, ancient. Wiccan, isn't it? Is, is, no, way before. Like, yeah. so Angry Pan, man. Pan, I think originated in like Peri- Parisian. I think it orig- originated in French folklore, Pan was, which, but oh, long, noticed. long time ago. Yeah. Yes. But then it turned out that once they'd done all their research on Pan, that it went even further back. Not not Hellier, the, the French. It went even further back than that. They were finding it that it was carved in like things way yeah. before their side. And it, it, but then Pan is basically the name of, ev- of every religion's main god. Mm. Before yeah, yeah. modern Christus, Christian is Christian, whatever it's called, Christianity. Yeah. yeah. So like all the Nordic old gods and all the yeah. Japanese and, and know, all these are all called the pan. word. The word panic comes from pan. It comes from pa- pan's that anger. Surprise me. The yeah. shout that like a panic would be when you'd angered pan, like the shout of pan, which is weird. Synchronous. Yeah. Or baked something, beans. baked beans. So yeah, <laughs> sorry. So uh, it goes et- all the, as soon as they started talking about Pan and um, like the spirit of Pan, and maybe this is a, a magical ritual. That's when yeah. I started going. I'm back in, and even the second time round, I was still like, "This is pretty cool. This bit, I like all this bit." And it, and then, and then they start le- get. They're still following all these other things, but like this main sort of thing comes out because I think it's the the easiest one for them to believe was that they're part of a magical ritual that someone else has instigated. It's performed and, th- and it's targeting well, no, them well, no, from somewhere else. Part of the ritual is to get someone else to do it, basically. Right, right. And, uh, yeah, okay. And throughout it, the, the Pan is like, oh, maybe it's Pan that we need to connect with. And then at the end of it, they do a big ritual for Pan. Nothing happens. <laughs> uh, of course not. If they were eating baked uh, beans on toast, though... Oh okay. my god! Yeah, but get this, Dean. They're, they're not. They're not actually eating baked beans. And Imagine toast, they do, though. They do take them a bottle of wine and, and some then bread. Just pour it all and bread. Imagine, and all right? The if they'd oh. got to the that cave where they did the initiation for Pan, and they just found a green giant, a tin of green giant sweet <laughs> corn. <laughs> I'd have been like, yes, I'm in. Sweet, sweet corn, there it is. green giant. And all you can hear from, and all you can hear from oh, the distant oh, oh. cave <laughs> is <laughs> oh, oh, oh. jolly green giant, oh, giant, oh, oh. giant, giant, giant. Yeah. That so yeah, the, the Pan thing, thing and. And then it became like this big thing, like maybe the whole thing, the whole documentary, everything was part of this magical ritual. And it really got me, that really got me excited and I was, when I was watching it the first time around. And so much so that I got a pan tattooed on my arm. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, I was like, fuck, pan's a gangster. Wait a minute, this, this whole episode and him getting us to watch Elia is a build up for him getting his bloody tattoo, isn't it? No, this is, I, this is what happened before. This happened before I told anyone about Helia. I watched oh. Helia both seasons, got pan tattooed on me, and then I was like talking to JJ about weird shit, and I was like, oh, you should watch Helia. You should have contacted yeah. But I never told him. I've never told him. And I've never told anyone about the tattoo. You should have emailed them and been like, I've just recently done a podcast about terrorists, and I've got a pan tattoo as well. I liked yeah. Jolly Green Giant Sweet Corn. I'm Get dope. me involved. Hook us up with a fucking sweet sponsorship with Jolly Green Giant Sweet Corn. Loads of beans fucking in the cupboard. <laughs> I, one of the things, right, that, the thing with that is as soon as they latch onto that idea of um, r- religion, that's when they start, for me, that's when they just start losing their fucking yeah. mind. They just start losing their shit. Like, that... Pan is a three-letter word, right? And they're just like, 
they're linking it like you go into the guy's Everything, bedroom and yeah. he's got fucking things everywhere he's like look at this picture of pan that's what we saw in the fucking on the carvings and, yeah. and they start talking about shit that they don't even mention in the podcast like there's no everyone else is like what you want about like there's no and then they just quickly like you know turn the page yeah. carry on Forget with something else they go, and then they, they start weird, doing all these fucking yeah. weird hypnotist shit and it's like you, yeah, you they just go, they go back way to this thing where they they'd hypnotize someone into like one of their episodes on their YouTube channel where they hypnotized this bloke into believing he'd been abducted by aliens. So they go, yeah. oh, maybe we could hypnotize one of us but into. They like, do that revealing. as a litmus test, though. They do that yes. as a litmus like, test to see whether to, to see whether that it is like possible to convince somebody of something. So yeah, like, which 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 is hilarious episodes. because it's like. Why are you everything. doing that? You're disproving everything you, you're yeah. talking yeah. about. I remember watching, so you basically... watching that. I remember watching it and just being like, do they even know what they're doing here? Like, I was like, they're just about to literally contradict well, they themselves. Unvalidate entirely. everything or devalidate, yeah. unvalidate. Or devalidate, whatever. yeah. I was like, so they put yeah. this guy under to, under like hypnosis, or this dude is. Well, they did like, this I before. They did this... anything into his head. They and just did this before. That... They did that before any any of this Hellier thing. They did this a long time ago. So they basically yeah. brought it up to go, oh, wait, you can just convince someone of something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, which is which is basically what Darren Brown says about yeah. every paranormal thing. Yeah. He's like, yeah, well, and, and something I can just hypnotize you to that, it. Something interesting uh, that they brought up was that um, actually mm, something like every UFO encounter encounter is 100% hallucinatory. Yeah. 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 I heard, yeah. Yeah, so, and they... Bring and, that oh, up they said it can be part of uh, disassociation with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. So they're saying it is like, you basically, you're envisioning something. This is why a lot of people envision aliens as completely featureless, is because mm, you're yeah. trying to disassociate your uh, attacker or predator or whatever you, the thing is, you're trying to kind of fucking mm. disassociate. With something associated with yourself. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, well, yeah, this this is why the majority of people believe that aliens uh, either sexually abuse them or uh, do tests yeah. on them is because it's related to sexual assault. So this oh, is the reason yeah. why people... So DD, disassociative disorder, is a, a thing that most people later in psychosis believe is an alien abduction or something like that. Interesting. Um, but one of, like going back onto this, it feels like all the hard work that they did in season one, which I believe season one had an air of sincerity. That's why I really enjoyed it. It had an it, air of honesty, it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they went, they were going to these fucking places and they were like, you know, they were researching and talking to people and like, again, people who were probably did believe it themselves, but... Right, yeah. No, not from educated backgrounds, and from areas that have like... Produced it helped too like i keep saying it it's it incredible didn't have, it didn't hold general tropes like there wasn't impactful music like to long out a situation or something like that to hit home yeah. something that wasn't convincing but let's put this audio track on there to try and make some people think this is super convincing like yeah i, I am gonna go back to it without doubt i'm gonna go back to it look, watch for it i'm probably still gonna hold the same opinion but i still think i need just as um as a person that enjoys this element of, well, entertainment to a degree, you know, I'm I definitely going to go back and take yeah, the, it, the production. The production on it is absolutely brilliant. The music is amazing. Everything about it is so well done. The editing, everything, like the cliffhangers, they've done it. They've made it. They've made a good documentary that makes you keep watching. Mm. Like, obviously not you, Dean, but. <laughs> 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 Me, like me and JJ, I, I guarantee you, until the second time watching it, were like well into it, right? I don't think if the if the lockdown was there, I probably wouldn't have carried on after like season after the middle of season one. Yeah, but I feel because because you were so hyped on it, I watched season episode one and I was messaging my friends about. It. I was like, you need to watch this shit. I'm not saying because I didn't want to invest. I didn't want to be like. This is real. I believe this is real. I was yeah, saying, I think yeah. it might be a mockumentary. Yeah. And I, I think I, the first thing I messaged you was like, is this a mockumentary? Yeah, we've been like, at it. I, yeah. I still don't yeah. know. I still don't know. Yeah. The first, one, of the, one of the most searched questions on uh, Google about Hellier is, is it a mockumentary or is it a parody of... 
I mean, it's not a parody because it's not that yeah, funny. It's, like, the, it's, it's, it's more it's, sad than anything. It's, but. People, it's people that are experiencing the Blair Witch Project for the first time, it feels like. Because obviously, yeah. remember when yeah. that came out, there was like... Well, they, um, that was, was it, the best the market... Direct- Sorry? They made another documentary. They made a documentary and fake news reports to make the yes, Blair Witch yeah, Project real. Wasn't a, it was a, a very similar situation like with when Cannibal Holocaust was directed. They actually had yeah. the, the director was arrested because they were like, "Where are these free fucking people that you yeah. that you've managed to get hold of these tapes for?" And obviously, he had to bring the actors out of hiding to sit there and be like, "Yeah, it's we're contractually well, obligated to stay away for like a year." Of production, like to stay out of uh, our actual lives of getting yeah. other jobs as acting. So, I think yeah, that that curiosity is probably people of this new generation that are like, is this another Blair, or is it they're experiencing the whole Blair Witch phenomena thing for the first time? Yeah. Well, it's- I told you guys about that documentary conspiracy. Uh, sorry, the film, the conspiracy. Mm. They'd. I don't know how they'd done it, but they'd. The the can of the produ- pre production can't have been seven years older than the film, but they'd gone and made websites and character stories seven years prior to the release of the film, and That's- I was because it was like a build. It's on uh, it's on Netflix now, but it's like oh, really? uh, spoiler alert by the way. Obviously, it's too late because I've already told <laughs> you. But um, I watched it and I was like, "Is this real? I can't work out because it was that well done because it was basically like a bit like the Bilderberg Group." They infiltrate, yeah. uh, sorry, not Bilderberg, um, Bohemian Grove. They infiltrate yes. a uh, camp and then they like, all these names get mentioned. And I was searching the names while I was watching it, like, oh, this guy exists. Oh, this must yeah. be real. And it like, <laughs> took me so, but then I went on Wikipedia and it was like, it said, but then at the bottom, it was like, there was no reference material or anything like that. Yeah, and it was no like, sources. obviously all been removed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was, but it was absolutely incredible. But that's yeah. what I think hellier have done because well the good thing is though that all their all them source material is real things and they've mm. they're basically just like because they mention like later on they mention alistair crowley and crypto yeah. cryptozoology crypt, 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 and crowley. yeah it's up everywhere it does yeah. i know for a guy who was just like a dirty weirdo he's done all right <laughs> done all right for himself yeah isn't it yeah he's but, quite cemented into pop culture <laughs> One of your big things, Ben, was that the the magic element of it, like the because we've spoke about this in previous podcasts with the the simulation theory, how we are willing something to happen as a collective. Yeah. That that's it is, what they were doing. I feel that's yeah. what they were doing. They but do you think it was everything. just like group hype between yeah. themselves? But that's all magic right, is. Yeah. That is because that that is. fucking that but we haven't mentioned him and I can't remember his fucking name but that Bear Grylls dude oh Tyler guy, Strand he's like he has no fucking he doesn't give a shit what he does I was like because he's a fucking idiot like yeah. he's like jumping in caves nowhere yeah. to get out he doesn't know where the exit they're is like, he's just they jumping some, in they him. did suck they were like he's just like a giant puppy I'm like yeah that means because he's a fucking moron he's an absolute <laughs> idiot but he basically screamed <laughs> like it, his personality screamed to me ex-jock who didn't make it in the NFL or not, you know, big fucking strong guy didn't make it yeah. now needs, now needs a new group of people to be the leader of or to yeah. be part of. That's yeah, what that he sad. like, it was really yeah, he's sad. He's quite a sad guy. Um, he, yeah, he, he just used to go his... off on a night and be like, Oh yeah, I'm in the woods. I've got, all I've got is my waterproof jacket and a camp knife. He forced himself <laughs> into the group kind of thing with like, it, if he obviously knew them, knew what they were doing and kind of just started doing research for them without and then they were like well you're doing loads of work come and join us yeah Um, yeah, yeah. and then his his spirit box for me was the most unbelievable one the second time the first time yeah because he he was (laughs) he put on a weird voice through the whole thing didn't he he was like going my name is michael yes you've met me before like it was clearly like felt like he could hear them that he was but they were saying that he was like passing out and he was like going cold and like sweating and stuff. And I was, I mean, we all watch the same footage. Yeah. He doesn't look like he is. He just looks like he's putting on a fucking. Yeah. And he, bit he of felt a... like he could hear what they were asking him. That he yeah. genuinely did. Like he was like, he was like, he was answering the questions. Like without, yeah, yeah. with no, no, there was no obscurity to like when Connor did it. And we, because there was that moment in the first series when they were doing it. One of them had the spirit box on, and one of them was doing the other thing, and they were actually. It did feel like they were having a conversation, 
Like, mm. It feel like they were like something was happening. Do you remember that one in the domes? Yeah. That genuinely felt like something was happening. So that is that the one where they were doing the, the God the, machine and, and the, the, the spirit box? Yeah. yeah. So I've done a spirit box when I was younger and I've done it not recently, maybe like a couple of years ago. The thing with the hearing, I was just about to say it, but then I was I brought myself back. Even with like noise cancelling headphones, even if you had it at a, a normal volume, it is so hard to decipher anything going on outside yeah. it because you do naturally become meditative. Yeah. Like you do naturally feel like I could, it's, yeah, a, I it's a white, it's a white noise most of the time. Almost. But then there's like, but when I did it, it was almost, I did it at a festival once, right? And I don't know if you guys remember, they used to do that and they used to do this thing where they put uh, like a strip of like red LEDs above your eyes. It was called like the God Machine. Or it's similar to like it wasn't yeah. called that. And you used to it was at like old Leeds and download festivals, but it did the same thing. It, it played like white noise, and then like these like red lights used to like str you close your eyes and they used to strobe over you, and it almost put you in a meditative state. And I swear I it was like it was I like could, it felt like it was like four hours long, and it was probably about that, ten minutes. Like the way you've explained it with the idea of like white noise as well. I mean, I don't believe spirit boxes. I just generally don't. But the way you've explained that to me, I could generally imagine feeling displaced and like you were saying, almost feeling like you're in a lucid dream almost. They, there's one part that they don't really explain very well in the documentary when they first do the spirit box. And it's the way that I explained it as well. Didn't really... When you get told to do a spirit box, you're supposed to tune into what you can hear vocally. But after a, cer after a certain amount of time, the white noise starts making sense. It sounds... I know that sounds like super strange. And I would highly recommend like... And it's probably right, really, right. really irresponsible of me, but <laughs> don't have any intention of doing of anything, but just try listening to white noise for longer than 20 minutes. And you will start hearing stuff. It's like when they say... Look into a mirror um, for a long time and you'll see different faces. And, and also the, the room, the, the silent room. So like if you oh, go yes, into a room yeah, yeah, that's yeah. completely... You, like people can't last longer than like 15 minutes to start going insane with yeah. just silence. Like the, I think it's... I think there's one in England. I think it's at the Liverpool Sound Institute and I think you can yeah. go to it and you they just put you in a room that's completely like deadened. They've said it's like 0.01% yeah, not sound. And it makes people go mad. But the, the other thing is like weird. It makes you feel like you're surrounded by everything. So it's like completely opposite. Mm. And that's the thing. I think that's what makes you, because we've been speaking a lot like in our chat about paranoia and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's got that very high sense of like, and it starts becoming, without getting too like hippie, it starts becoming like stereoscopic. Yeah. It starts okay. feeling like there's things in front of you, things behind you, things higher, which then in your mind you make the illusion that it's like, oh, it's higher than me, it's God, it's ghost. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. and then you start getting like internal like Ugh. that and I think that's what that guy's experiencing. I think it's the nausea of that overwhelming just, sense I, of I don't know, the Tyler Strand one, I really just don't believe it. I feel like he was too animated he was like putting this weird voice through the whole thing he was answering the questions way better than anyone else like they normally yeah. when they, like, and rapidly as well he was like yeah. what what are we here for and he's like to find new solutions <laughs> or whatever yeah and like, they go whatever what was. is your name my name is michael i'm like, <laughs> like <laughs> come on mate like seriously I, that was the most interesting thing for me the whole say, the whole thing terry wrist it sounds like banks's uh arch enemy yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but it, that was the only bit of, and, and and this is what makes it hilarious. Like if anyone was tuning in and like all the shit we spoke about, and I still, from an outside point of view, they'd just be like goblins, UFOs, ancient pan, guy listening to an iPod that's like shuffling through FM, and it it makes no sense at all. But that for me is the most convincing evidence because it doesn't yeah. feel like. It doesn't feel like there can be any physical connection between yeah. I th that. The best but. one for me in those spirit box kind of, like those experiments was the one in the domes, the moth, where, where the Mothman 
thing was all set up. That was the one that was like, that's really interesting because she was asking him questions and he was, they were answering like in a, in a roundabout way. Um, I'm gonna go. I, I'm gonna go back it's... and watch this. This is. Uh, but I, I was like thinking I from uh, what you what we've just touched on with those JJ, because you know we wanted to do, I think uh, like a documentary kind of thing. I would love to do one on us as skeptics doing these experiments, like go into that cell yeah, to, and really yeah. kind of going right. Actually, right, we don't believe this. Let's do it. Let's, yeah, let's so, do it the way it's supposed to be done. Yeah. Like, yeah. So the spirit box guy, just for anyone who hasn't seen it, the spirit box guy is back to back with uh, a girl who's doing the God machine, which is a complete sensory deprivation, apparently. This is what... I am still don't know what the God machine does. Oh, it's magnetic so, pulses, isn't it? It's yeah, so, so what... So but what is that induce, feeding to? It's meant to induce a religious religious experience so, experience so the magnetic the different magnetic pulses on the type on parts of the brain um are meant to feed into like this third eye kind of thing so places with different with higher magnetic um places with higher magnetic um uh, i don't know electromagnetic fields in those places have yeah. a higher level of religious experiences and right psychedelic and experiences so, and, and most like of that. those places are usually to do with the electromagnetic field created yeah, by so water this, helmet, this is why where they were was a lot of water running through mm. it. yeah and they had so she put on this ag- electromagnetic um helmet thing imagine back to the future where my oh, yeah, Doc- goes goes to see doc brown yeah, yeah he's got that thing on his head Tell me who's the president of the United States, future That's boy? Uh, Ronald Reagan, the actor. Yeah, um, one of those. But I don't, I don't understand. Was the pulse going inwards to her brain to to make her brain? Yeah, different. Be stimulated. So, but where did that come from? What was the machine? It was like a, I guess, a car battery. <laughs> <laughs> you know. oh. What was it called? God helmet. <laughs> It was uh, the God helmet, yeah. Um, uh, because they were the so ba- basically, Dean. They were speaking to each other, and it started off a bit like mimic, 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 yeah, mat, 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 and then it became mat, 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 mat. They were speaking and answering each other's questions yeah, to an extent, really... and it was if it's fake. It's quite obviously easy to be faked. It's not a hard thing. I mean, we right. could fake it now and we're like, you know, thousands of miles like away. It's not... origin- yeah, it sounds quite original in itself. It was, for me, that was like, that's incredible. Like, mm. just that just that experiment. I don't, I don't yeah. care about Helia. On its own, that is incredible. But if yeah. it was credible, <laughs> many of other people would have done it before. Yeah. Well, like, they, well they said that it's, it's done, like, it is done in those circles. We're just not in those circles. Yeah. That's like a known thing that people do. Mm. Um, it, I just Googled God Helmet and there's loads of YouTube videos, websites and stuff about people using it. So what is it what is the thing that influences her thoughts? Um, like well, you guys have be- computers in front of you. Like mine's like so far away. It looks like it. the thing that the char- computer character um, Commander Keen wears on his head. It's, I don't know who Commander Keen is. It's just a little game. game it basically it, from it the eighties. That's crazy. <laughs> God help it. I like how someone's just produced that, and it was like, "Do you want to see how you can actually get in contact with God?" Yeah, it kind of. Like, it it stimulates. <laughs> it stimulates parts of the brain that make you more open and to outside. You know, like they say that kids can um, six can see. Like they've got more of a sixth sense for like going yeah. there because they haven't been they haven't had they their haven't been indoctrined le- into uh, things haven't been turned down in their brain. Apparently, gotcha, it turns gotcha. everything back up again. But hmm. so she so All she's essentially she's GFC, essentially so. got nothing. She's essentially got no no influence outside influence. Her uh, she's got uh, isolating headphones on as well. Yeah. So that's the that's the one for me because she's. If, even if she's got isolating headphones on, she's going to be able to hear what that guy's saying. 
Yeah. Like, even with noise cancelling headphones these days, you can still hear what people are saying. It's not fucking... That, you see, I thought she was, like, completely blocked off by something. Mm. I think she's meant to be, but, yeah. But, but no, again, I yeah. Don't, no, I think she, she, she can hear. I think that's the thing. She can hear, and she's asking him questions, and that's what they go. They go, right, Dana, you ask the questions now, because there's a connection ah, here. Ah, right. Okay, and there so was, no... like, he was only answering to what Dana had said. Like you see, was I was under the illusion was that thinking. they were both sensory deprived. No, she she couldn't see. She just had this thing on and she was getting visions. Mm. And they would ask questions and she started saying stuff that she could see. And as she was saying it, he Connor would start kind of answering or like going, yeah, yeah that's this, that's this. And, and it, got, could, it got really synchronized, right? It synchronized got to a point to where, a point where they like, were like, we're not going to say anything anymore. Just you two do it. And it got, yeah. did, and then... And, she went, oh, it's finished. And then he went, I think it's finished. I can't, like, it's just yeah, stopped. Like it, and it, yeah, and he was like, no, it felt like I'd been switched off. Like they turned the yeah. whole thing off. And it See, was really interesting. This is an interesting perspective from my point of view, because from the beginning, like if you was just to, listening to you both, as well as myself, you'd be like, these guys just think this is horse shit. But the, you guys have just literally blended into a, like a, I'm quite convinced by this. Like, it comes across as quite legitimate. It's the thing, it's the one thing in the in all of the show that I genuinely believe in. Like, right. I do okay. but I do believe in being able to channel energy from yeah. other places. Yeah. I believe in that strongly. I believe that we don't have the capacity, like, us as human, like, as we are, we don't have capacity to do it. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel, I feel with meditative state, and hallucinogenics and all it's sorts of shit. Possible, it's yeah. hugely think... possible. But we also, when we're in a hallucinogenic state, we don't have the brain to analyze it. So it's kind of no, like of you yeah, you like... replace one thing for another. You turn on say, your, you mis- turn on the middle eye, but the rest of your body's it's, fucking it's vegetative. The mystery, it's the mystery of death. Like we know it exists, but we don't know anything about it. And it's the same thing. We know that you can open your mind up to like different things through psychedelics but we don't know whether it is in fact opening ourselves up to a different dimension yeah. or it's just the brain being tricked. We can't because be we've be, we've been conditioned as humans to be to believe that when we are under the influence, everything we see it's, is dog shit. Right, Whereas exactly, in, yeah, a, anciently, anciently, and this is, they speak about this a lot in, um, they speak about it briefly in Hellier about how a lot of it's like Indian so the first season a lot of the areas are all old indian well yeah kind of like settlements settlements exactly sure yeah and they speak about that a lot and uh but you you read anything about native indian law that like they get high as fuck to reach their ancestors and they they don't see it as like them getting high as fuck they see it as actually reaching their ancestors yeah contacting different realities essentially and i think that that's one of those things that like we get conditioned to and that's probably why in my opinion it's probably why that they illegal make drugs illegal and now them slowly slowly releasing them out to you they're like oh well the 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 government of yeah and you now know. they're telling us aliens are real as well at the same time. Oh, we do. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. yeah By the I way, think we found one of them ships. What? Getting back, yeah. to, <laughs> getting back to Helia, um, I think that's 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 the legitimate side of it is that, that what they do and how they go about it throughout the, the series, both series, is that they're doing the right things. I think how they got there, how it started is bullshit. Like it's either they've sent themselves the emails to set the whole thing up. Yeah. Or is someone doing a wind up and they just, they've just gone with it. Yeah. And then in the second season, they're like, well, we need to, this needs to get more exciting. Okay. Let's send yeah, another we're email. Deep in this and let's, send an, let's get, let's get another email. Like, yeah, it, it's, I really enjoyed even the second time around. I really enjoyed all those experiments and, all the kind of ritual stuff and that. I right. just definitely think that those guys have just convinced themselves through paranoia and groupthink that... And a Netflix contract. And a, yeah, Amazon an contract. Amazon Prime <laughs> contract. Because nothing happens, really. Do you, also, do you also not maybe think, though, that you know, when, you know when people are so committed to something that they just lose themselves in it? Yeah, you know, that's like, exactly what happened. You've got that friend who's got that crazy fucking idea and you're just like, 
do it, man. Like, I, I'm one of these people who would say, just do it. And that's the only, you know, even yeah. if it involved him spending all his fucking life savings on doing it. Well, you that's, look, his fuck, you that's his fucking choice. Like, you, you look at the opposite. There's a guy out there, I can't remember his name, but he... It's actively trying to disprove like the Tic Tac UFO phenomena and stuff like yeah. that. I can't. I think it's Michael something. I think Joe Rogan had him. Michael Sh Shermer. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's correct. Think him, yeah. But like you were saying, it's just the opposite of people that are that invested in making sure to try yeah. and prove. It's the different of the spectrum, isn't real. it? Real. You do get lost in it. But the same as the, as this guy that tries to disprove everything. It's his profession yeah. now, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, there, skeptic. A there is a, there's a professional skeptic. Yeah. Like, right. I think it's like so then that's unconvincing in itself. It's like, well, no, you make a living out of trying to prove things wrong. So you're just gonna look at proving mm. everything possible. Did you hear wrong. that the, the only thing he's go, ever not Right, that if guy, one day you go, Oh, I ain't got an answer for this, then you're fucked. Like, the only thing he hasn't he's ever gone, Oh, I'm skeptical about is uh, Epstein not killing himself, apparently. <laughs> it's the only thing he went, Yeah, that that, that seems that like dude he was did, yeah, that, that, dude that was guy killed. was killed. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but if you <laughs> tried to disprove it, someone would just sit there and go you're a, you, you, you like raping kids. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's like 2020 at the minute. Like, oh, I don't I, think uh, Epstein was killed. What's that? You want to fuck a kid? I just, um, just before we started this, I watched um, a documentary, uh, it's like 40 minutes, of uh, a Swedish dude on YouTube. And he, he goes into it. He's a paranormal investigator and stuff like that. And he was saying how he got sucked into Hellier. And he said he saw the telltale signs straight away because he said, I've used them in the past to get YouTube views and stuff like this. He kind of, but he, he said one of the things that, down. yeah, it, it, he said one of the major things that people lose in this whole thing is that most people, and I'd say that we're in this category, want to do things for fun. Like yeah. they want to believe yeah. it. In the back of their mind, they kind of go, I'm not going to invest this much time, but I'm really happy that someone else is. Yeah. Because yeah. if I was in that position and that was my sole thing, I'd invest that much time into it. Like we've yeah. all done well, things it. like, like we, we talk about, like we've all talked about in the past, like band culture, the bands we've been in. And we're like, oh, we're going to invest so much time into this because it's going to be amazing. And it, everyone's doing it. But then when you watch Hellier, you're like, no one's fucking doing this. This is amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want those yeah. guys to do it because I don't have the fucking time. Yeah. And he's basically said, he said, the, the issue is with all these things. And it's kind of what I said before about the Warren family. They were like, they had the finger in so many pies that one of them might come true. Like, and right. you, know, yeah. you know, it's it's like that guy, it's like when people go on Dragon's Den and they go, we don't want your shitty fucking plug hole that like, <laughs> blows hair back out we want you because you are fucking great we want you we don't care about your plug hole and they're like what my plug hole i spent my whole fuck i sold my house to build this plug hole and the guy's like we don't care because of this yeah and they can just see it in somebody and i think yeah. that's the thing that probably yeah. got me and ben hooked on hellier i'm not just yeah. you know they were doing what we wanted to do which was to go yeah. and chase ghosts Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they've built now, they've built a back career that can kind of like validate it. Like, yeah. you know, and this is where I think we're all at at this, at this time. And this is the reason why, like, if we're going to like wrap it up soon, I think this is probably where our synchronicities came into it. We yeah. happened to, we happened to be in a lockdown. Like, obviously I didn't know you, Dean, but I knew Ben and Ben knew you. And then we did yeah, this. yeah, yeah. It's like three guys who fucking, you know, we don't believe it all, but it's fun. Well, we love like, being it's so in. fun. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. And we were saying like, Ben's obviously a videographer and you're into your streaming and like <laughs> everything like that. And like, <laughs> I'm like, just, I fucking love conspiracies. Yeah. And it's like yeah. that, like we've been talking about me and Ben, every time he sees something new, he's just like, we should fucking film something like that. I'm like, yeah, man, <laughs> fucking just do it. Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. just find it, it's finding the time. Yeah. And I think that's and the good thing about Hellier. To make, yeah, it's, yeah, it's they made like, it fucking happen. <laughs> yeah, they I mean, made they, it happen. They put, it's I, the same I, case in a different angle of us putting dots together. Yeah. 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 It's good. I, I generally think what they've done was brilliant. It is brilliant. It's a great documentary. It's a great series. It's flawed so much. So there's so many flaws in it, but I don't hate it. I, I've watched it twice now and I still go... I still You've enjoyed got respect it. for it. Yeah, yeah I still enjoyed it both times round. I was just way more critical this time round because I knew that yes. I had to talk about it for an hour and 45 minutes. And I couldn't just go, oh man, yeah, 
that bit, you know, terrorists definitely leading them there, like, you know, oh, it's all real. I, because I know that it's not, because I've watched <laughs> it now, the second time around, the, the rose-tinted glasses have gone. It's yeah. For me, it's like, I still respect what they did and what they've made. And i definitely watch something. If they did a third season, there's no way I wouldn't watch it. Yeah. Do you, like, do, you think, do you think that they've watched it back and gone... Do you think they've watched it back and laughed? You know, like when you're when you watch old videos of you in bands when you're a kid, yeah. and you're just like, oh my god, what the fuck am I doing? Oh, like yeah, an idiot. Same as me with YouTube videos. At, yeah. at the time, you think you're like the coolest dude in the world. <laughs> I like, hope was so. so fucking cool then. I hope so. I hope they they've because there's there's two podcasts that just come out with Greg Newkirk about it that he's done. I've not listened to him yet, but I hope he had a bit of humility and a, a bit of like. Oh yeah, there's some bits in there that we kind of, you know, had to go in there for the documentary. Yeah, he's got had some to lead us about like, himself, maybe. But I hope yeah. that's happening. It's not just gone. Oh yeah, it's all still happening, and it's just crazy. It's just, you know, I I really hope that they are they are quite real with it, and yeah. they don't just believe everything because it does. Well, by the end of it, I feel like they are believing anything because we've not even got to the end of it yet. Um, because the the final episode, I've just watched it again, and it's. <laughs> Like it's a really, they do a really nice like uh, invocation of Pan, like a really nice ritual. It's silly. They they bring some wine and some bread, but it's you know it's kind of a nice ending to the series. And if they'd ended it there, I would have gone, okay, they did it. Nothing really happened, you know. They had a moment like they put some played some weird tones, and you know Greg did some shouting, and he felt really ill and like, but you know they left <laughs> deflated. Like they didn't, nothing happened. But instead of ending it there, they go three weeks later, and oh, then like don't. Connor and this guy like um, who comes in every now and again, they go. So we've been thinking about the numbers from Terry's email that he sent in 2012. Ugh. It says follow the numbers now. We think we thought they were a credit card number. We thought they were coordinates. We thought they were this. We thought that, but what happens if you just add them all together? You're like, okay, what? Because we never thought about that. So they, so, so he gets this big whiteboard out. Oh, <laughs> he writes down all the numbers. And can, I just, but can I just interrupt a second? The most annoying part is that this random fucking last, this dude, these guys have been slaving away for 16 fucking hours of our life, like filming this shit. And this guy comes in, proper cock show with his yeah, white Yeah, he's like, he's the old and he's guy, like, isn't he? Uh, I'll let you continue, but you need to see it. If you can, if we can get a clip from it from somewhere, it's just like, eh, and then, eh. And, and how they do so this like, maths. Uh, yeah. Because I wish Sorry. I could get the maths up right now in front of me. Um, I'm going to uh, say, final it, episode. Yeah, you can't, you can't even, no, we'll just get laughed off the stage. Right, I found it. I found it on. Um... Right, so the numbers were like three six zero zero two five zero five eight okay. one nine zero oh, six eight four zero oh. zero 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 zero. Uh, right, so so they they basically line them all up in in fours. Right, so firstly, why are you why have you put them in fours? Oh, we'll yeah, just put them in fours. You know, it's divisible that, by four, so we'll put it in. Oh a, in, no, they, in no, no, they do, they do, they do explain it. It's to do with uh, the thingy cipher that's in the back of Alison Crowley's book. Yeah. All oh, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So it's called. In fact, I remember this because the Call of Duty reveal last week used the same cipher, and it's a, a block of it's a block of four. Um, and I can't remember what it's called, which is really annoying. But Call of Duty, the influencers for the new Call of Duty Zombies got it, the cipher last week. And right, somebody okay, mentioned yeah. somebody cool. mentioned Alistair Crowley. Synchronicity. Block cipher. Block cipher. Goddamn nonce everywhere. And it's to do with uh, zero, one, two, th or ABC, and then ABC downwards. Long -latitude and then you, latitude sort of shit. And you, you write, you put that number in, and then you replace every other number with something else but sorry Ben. but they, but they yeah, but so they put these 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 numbers into this block of four so four by four block and then they go right so let's go along the top uh, let me get the number so they go three plus six equals nine okay and then they go because then then zero zero so then and then two five zero five okay two plus five is seven plus five is twelve 
add one and two together, three. So why have you split 12 into... <laughs> why, yeah, why have you just done that? Yeah, they go, well, you so have that, to go down to the lowest number, the, right? That is actually what the what they do in Cypher. So as soon as anything goes over the number uh, Ten, over nine. two digits, you add them together. Right. right. So they've added so together. So that, that is... And I laughed when we talked about this, but... This right. is so what happened on mechanical. Call of Duty. And somebody on Call of Duty worked this out this week by yeah. using that cipher. So 2505, uh, so the next one was 8, 8 plus 1 is 9, plus 9. 18, so 18, 9. So, so yeah. 9. So 9, right. And then they go, right, 6 plus, uh, six plus 8 is 12, plus 4 is 16, right, 7. So they go, they put, then, so they got that number, which is what, 6... No, nine, three, nine, and <laughs> seven. Is seven. They add, add them together. Gets you the number. And I can't remember. I can't bother to work that out. And they it get, came to 31. And then yeah. they said backwards, 31 13. is 13. And right. they're like, all right. And then they're like. You, right, okay. <laughs> and what? You can't just go, if yeah. you turn that round, 13. <laughs> yeah. What? That's, not, that's not, not how numerology works. You can't just make numbers. So what does that mean? So the, the original block cipher only works if there is a, a second cipher in place. Yeah. I've only Which learned this from, the, from these Call of Duty so things the recently. So the second cipher is from the secret cipher, the Euphonauts. So, and then they'll which get up was, like 1025. So they put that number in. Which was that, and then it would just give you a message from the book, like um, final was it the the Euphonauts thing was, and they used that as well this week. Yeah. It was one or two five, so one would signify the line, yeah. Zero would signify the word, and five would signify the letter, yeah. So if it was zero, you would go back onto the word that was on the line previous. I think like one is like the page. One is the page. Zero yeah. is, but zero shouldn't have been. That was just the example, wasn't it? Yeah, but yeah. It's like. It usually it would signify if there's four digits, it signifies page, uh, letter. Sorry, page, page, line, or page, paragraph, line, word, yeah, number. Um, and, then, and I think they they or, they or you could type in like um, a message. So they got this email from Terry Wrist. <laughs> it types in the message, and that gave you number one zero two five. Right, and then they're like, "Oh, one, eight, two, five. and then they read that thing. And like, That's got the number four one eight in it in that thing. So they type four one eight in, and it goes, oh, "That's not." That's, and then they just start typing numbers into this cipher, and then they start. I don't numbers think. That yeah, that's it. I don't think that they understand ciphers that well. And the th the well, thing I, is, if they do, they haven't explained it very well in the documentary. Yeah, I, don't, I just don't yeah, think they explain it. Even, even oh, me I stopped, watching, I it off. watching like. <laughs> Four guys who just play Call of Duty solidly. Even I understand what they were saying because they're talking about they're trying to work it out. Whereas in these guys are just trying to get to their point, which is we've got all these fucking numbers. We don't have a fucking clue who Terry Wrist is. We've just gone and wasted a good bottle of wine and some good bread in a cave while my fucking girlfriend, <laughs> my girlfriend raves about some fucking weird shanty shit Cut that she's going on about. A bake bean tin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh my god! I've so just. Like it didn't amount to anything. Oh yeah, so so yeah, I think they were like, yeah, right. So when Connie used the math, for the they, they got thirty-one the and the threes and the nines. <laughs> so basically, they got thirty-one and they got a few threes and a few nines. And then in Philema, uh, we are ninety-three, which Philema's the it, religion yeah. that Aunt, uh, Alistair Crowley, Alistair Crowley was part of. So right. they used to say we are he ninety-three. Yeah, he made it. We are 93. Yeah. So they're going, oh, we've got nines, we've got threes, we've got 31. What is three times 31? 93. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> you just got, what, how? You get, there, going, is, there is like a huge, you know, the 11 11 thing that I was talking yeah. about. There is a huge thing like the power of three. There's yeah, a lot love of and will talking is 11 about 11. It, isn't like, all, all talking about it at the yeah. moment. And it's just like, it's just. You know, like math nerds get on with like prime numbers and stuff like that. Mm. It's just the same as that. Like yeah. it's it's number like three sixes and nines. Like oh my god, they're just it's because they're uneven. Like people like that whole fucking right. right. Yeah. You know, it's it is it. I think it's this this whole trying because obviously people at this at this point they think they're part of this magical. They're they're doing a magical ritual for someone. <laughs> <laughs> JJ's just put a tin can in his chair while he's, he nipped away. He's gone for a wee wee. So yeah, so, but, uh, 
at this point in like the it's like the final episode of season two, which is it, it for me they should have ended at the pan ritual, but they've done this number thing that it's just like they're all sitting around Pure this room. They've all flown in. They've all flown into like different from different oh, places in. to pack come and have this no meeting, way. and then oh, like it just feels like. Numbers. Yeah, and they're just like, oh, we've got... It, it, it feels like they're like, well, nothing happened at the pan thing, so it can't be that. Oh, what can it be? I just oh, feel like they've, they're they just trying too hard. This sounds frustrating to watch. It's really... It, but <laughs> it's... <laughs> I, I do want to see where they think they're going to go with it next. I just... I think it's... It really yeah. isn't frustrating to watch, Dean. It's actually... It's super entertaining, but... Yeah, I'm, gonna, it, I'm going to... It's, I'm going to... For anybody who was going to watch it after watching this, it you is really frustrating. Watch it. To watch. You should, you should still watch it. watch it, though. I think after we wrap up, I'm going to go and watch episode two again and then just crack on through. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's um, just one of those things you could put on. It, you know, there's moments in it that are like, crap. There's moments in it that are good. There's like, there's a few yeah, things. Yeah, like, sure. Like, like Carl's talking about, Carl gets hypnotized in like episode, like the one of the last episodes. And like... Oh, when they got the footsteps upstairs. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. The, girl exactly. Goes, the girl goes like that. And I was like, well, hold on. Put me earphones in. And I sat there and turned, I was like, I didn't hear shit. I didn't yeah. hear yeah. shit. And, and even if you did, it could be post-production. So who cares? Right. So it's like, yeah. our pan. You know, like, yeah, yeah. It, and and then, they go, then he goes, like, they go to like this place and they go, oh, that's a statue. It's <laughs> got an old CNI. Oh, shit. And, no, that that fucking weird village they went to, where all the green men are carved into the trees. Yeah. You see, that's not rare. Like, there's yeah. loads of places in Norway and Finland and uh, yeah, Sweden and all that yeah. because they they still believe Pan is the god. Yeah. Like, they still believe that that's the thing. It's like yeah. you walking into a into a fucking churchyard and seeing it's, a crucifix. It it's goes not, back to the it goes back to the yellow car thing. Is that once they start talking about Pan and knowing like about Pan it. and Pan is the green man. They see it. It's there everywhere. It's like now I see Pan everywhere. I see the green man. Like I was walking through the woods the other day and he was in like they've carved into a tree. Like, yeah, it's, once you start looking for it or once you're aware of it, it's everywhere. And I yeah. think that's. You see, I wish they talked to... more about it in fucking Game of Thrones because it felt like something that they just brushed over. But that those old gods was meant to be like a big thing. And they never fucking carried on talking about it because that. That kind of old religion is interesting. Like it's it's mental because it's where where did it go? Like why did it get why did people get rid of it? And I yeah. think that's what because in my mind that's what Hellier was. It was what I'd concluded from it was that all this shit might have been a little pipeline to what those goblins were. Yeah. You know, that that's that's what I was I, trying to get from it. Like I got has from it. old religion been shoved so far have they all scuttled into the middle of the earth and they come out and fucking eat babies or whatever yeah. they fucking does weird hicks were saying well that's yeah. what i got from it the first time i watched it it was that that is it pan trying to be reimagined like is he trying to fight back yeah. and he's and and i genuinely kind of got that from it and that's why i ended up getting that pan tattoo because i was like yeah, pan, <laughs> he's back bring it back to pan man <laughs> I'm like, you are the pan. And then Rufio's he's coming in trying and to Yeah, I was just about to say, he's not, be there first. Yeah. it's not oh, Pete, pan. Peter Pan. Yeah. <laughs> but but there's portrait. a lot of, there's a lot of things in Peter Pan, the original books and, yeah, that are referencing the rituals that Pan, like the yeah. clapping for fairies and stuff on the Fae. Like, it's all kind of linked. And yeah, I think do. that for me was, the main thing I got from it, I think they should we should wrap up now with that. Is the it main is thing very I got interesting Helen. about is the, the about is, the link between P boys, the Peter yeah, Pan you boys story have me again. Yeah, you, 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 you the Pan stuff back in. and all of that ritual stuff and that kind of is it? I generally got the sense that Pan was kind of leading this and pulling them into it. And I know it sounds fucking mental, but from it, I got this Pan kind of feeling like. This is bigger than this documentary. It did, did feel you, like that. Did you feel right? Because I feel I feel like I'm the same as Ben on this. Okay. I felt like I just got dragged into each episode, and at the beginning of each episode, I was like, "Not another fucking episode." And then, literally, that last those last two episodes, I was like, "It seems to have validated 
all like dragging around. It felt yeah. like I was just being dragged along by a fucking horse and but cart. But then they, fe- like, it felt like they were dragged around. Tins well. everywhere and fucking, and that's it. Like it yeah. felt like you were going through their story. This feels <laughs> yeah. like more of a fucking review than anything else. It is else, a review, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, but yeah, I, 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 because there's moments that I feel like are forced, and I would, if any film document documentary filmmaker you're basically a journalist you're trying to sell your story you're trying to make it popular and and, and get people to watch it you're gonna put those things in but what i the, the main thing i pulled out of it was that it felt like like and they say it's like maybe we're part of a, a big sigil or mass magic thing oh there you go he spotted something um and I, so- I genuinely think they were and i feel like part of it and us talking about it now could be part of that magic point even more yeah. like we are talking about it. we're talking about pan like we know more i know more about pan now like and you know i believe that you know i never knew about pan before hellier now i do when there's a when there's enough viewers and enough energy the goblins are going to rise up out the floor and be like but what, like we pan. said like we said let's before, start a baseball team <laughs> like we said before simulation theory like we said before the simulation theory episode is that are we willing these aliens back into existence? Are we willing these conspiracies into existence? Right. Yeah. I and get that. it I get and it. it and it comes back round to that's why I wanted to do Hellier when we said that is because that's how I felt like we were willing things into existence. Yeah. And I also, you, you, did you, you, you know what? the night that I said um, I wanted to do Pan and I suggested Pan for the vote? It was exactly a year from when they did that Pan ritual in the cave. Uh, that is a bit weird. That's a, that is a coincidence. <laughs> it's a synchronicity. And JJ hey, was eating beans that night. And a tin night. can just being there. Have I got yeah. A tin can anyway, anywhere? no, I haven't. Dean, what's your? What do you think? What are you? What are your? What's your feelings on on uh, Elliot think, from not really watching from, it? <laughs> from when I watched it, well, from when I watched it, I didn't give it. I don't feel like I gave it uh, the honest approach coming from someone that kind of enjoys and entertains and likes to be part of this community. Like, I feel like I've kind of insulted it in a way by not watching it and not nah. persevering. So, well, no, that's what I feel like in myself. So now I feel yeah. like I need to go back and check it out. And, you know, I'm going to do that. And I, in the Discord, I'll, I'll end up posting my my thoughts and feelings on it. But you both... Uh, have... I mean, everyone else on the Discord has done, fucking yeah. hates it. Yeah. <laughs> And they all, I think, yeah, they, they kind of liked the idea of it. And then when they watched it, they were like, oh, yeah, well, you guys I'm are weird. <laughs> I'm, I'm willing Can I to have give my Patreon back? Uh, so <laughs> I'm willing to give no. it the benefit of the doubt. Like, I'm willing to go back and try it again as a wrap up. Like, Yeah, I, I think you need to. I mean, even if you don't get to the end of it, you at least sure. you tried it. Um, but now if you it. kind of take it, take what we said. And then go into it. Go. Oh well. I think you know, there's this a lot of honesty overall... behind it, by the sounds of it. A lot yeah. of honesty. But then there's genuine. a lot of not. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Well, well, I don't well, even I'll... think it's not. It's, it's not dishonesty. I think it's paranoia and um, wanting to be and wanting to believe. Right, like... and a lot of impressionable people. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. JJ. Again, like I say, I my, my heart's been on my sleeve with the whole with it the whole time like i i believe the elements that they're trying to do i believe that there is a, a an element that they work um i just feel that they don't have that person just saying but then again it doesn't make good tv they don't have that person going right let let's not bother with this one let's not waste our money on flight tickets but then when you've got somebody this is what we were saying before like if we had unlimited money and we could do whatever we wanted i remember when we first started this we were talking first thing me and ben were like we're gonna go and see dean aren't we we're gonna go to where we're gonna 51. go to where like, <laughs> yeah because because we, we are still doing huge. That. we're definitely gonna do that <laughs> yeah i mean we will when you guys start signing up for the patreon <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's the next tier plane plane ticket tier <laughs> yeah like we're gonna put a tier, i'm gonna a put a tier on there that's 10 grand and it's like area 51 money <laughs> yeah but you, you should see those fucking us. youtube influencers though i saw Bring a guy yesterday a thousand <laughs> yeah that's it i know if you pay, pay you in that much you can come with us Oh, you, yeah, can, yeah, yeah. you can, can buy film all the it. tickets. 
<laughs> you can just hold the camera and then we can all be in it. Um, yeah, I I believe a lot of the I believe a lot of the things that they use, the techniques that they use. I believe I don't believe that they contact the the whatever they're contacting. I believe that's us, but I believe they do influence it. As for the productivity of it, it's fantastic, and I would highly recommend watching it. And thank you, Ben, for introducing it to me, because um, it definitely did. I'd like to say it passed a week, but again, I watched it in two days yeah. and then told everyone about it. I told one of my uh, customers who's really into paganism and stuff, and she messaged me straight away saying, what the fuck is this trash? <laughs> um <laughs> And she did turn but up then I did say, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, she did, wanted a deposit back. But she did, um, she did uh, message me about, and I said, try get to the part where it talks about pan because I think that that's when it draws you into like. I think that's and this what is going to get through to it. It's the weird thing, like without going to like going on too much. But as soon as you start introducing elements of religion, things that are like quite most probably fake it's when people get interested but it's i think it's the fact that they controlled so many religion controlled so many people i think that that's what yeah, people yeah. are interested in but yeah i would say 100 percent for that um hell yeah 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 and i think that's it in it yeah that is, it. that is that is a very kind of short weird like i hate it but i love it yeah chat about it sounded like a really yeah. honest review it was it was so it, it was it is good it just yeah watch it everyone watch it get remember get in the discord chat about it. i know a lot of you who are like listeners regular listeners you've already watched it or you've already tried to watch it and you've slagged it off and <laughs> i if you if you didn't get to the end just give it another go persevere with it and then like then let's with. then let's talk about pan like let's let's see if that can come in and you know what you yeah. guys thought about that um and yeah, and if you really enjoyed this podcast and you want to help us out and make sure that we can do this every week uh, or at least every other week, which I think is what we're going to have to try and do. I think we're going to schedule it properly, right, guys? We're going to try and pers- Yeah, we're going to try and figure something out. But unfortunately, the money needs to come in and I've got work done yeah. five, unfortunately. Yeah, I think maybe uh, we'll just, work out uh, something. Just for everyone watching, we all do have normal jobs as well, but yeah. we all live in different area codes. It's so tough. it's uh yeah it's like yeah, it's, we can either dean can either get really early and we'll we'll be probably still at work or vice versa yeah, yeah, vice versa, you know yeah. we, we, we got weekends but came. i've got kids so it's hard for me to do anything on the weekends but, yeah, yeah if anything so, i'm the guy who literally does nothing i just sit in this that, chair waiting waiting for the camera to come on for next week and it and that's like why the we're so keeper. thankful it's, it's the last and episode. That's why we're so thankful for the likes of Patreons because, yeah. like, we're trying our One hardest step to closer. get this all together. It, and currently, the, you the, guys the, are covering most of the costs that this podcast in. So the Zoom account, the hosting, you know, yeah. those two things. Those two things are the only expense that you really have as a podcast, apart from our time, which really is. You know, we do this chat over WhatsApp anyway, so right, we yeah, really appreciate exactly. it. We will be better. And I think uh, releasing stuff on time. Um, once yeah, once we get the wheels in motion, we've talked to each other to try and figure something out. It will get better. Uh, this is just this is just an off the cuff moment because the last two weeks are my first full time two weeks that I've had with this new job. So of course I've obviously had to have me nut down with that. But it's going to change. It's going to get better. We yeah. can work it out. Eventually, it'll yeah, slip it'll be into uh, obs- obscurity in the office, and no one will recognize, realize he's not there doing and yeah. he's doing a podcast. <laughs> but yeah, thank you say, so this, much. Feels, this feels like a breakup episode. We're definitely coming back it's next not, week. We're right? definitely coming yeah. back. We're coming back <laughs> stronger. Um, has anyone got any ideas what they want to do next before we go? Oh, not to- I haven't even thought. I haven't even thought off the top of my head. Uh, yeah, yeah. As I can see, JJ's got one in his head that go he goes, on, I want to do this. Well, yeah. JJ, I suggest. I would really like to do the Warrens. Yeah, like it, okay, it was just we'll a thought the um, because it comes into fiction, fact and fiction, and yeah. you and know, but every, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, they, they say the Conjuring films were apart from obviously all the real parts that happened. They're saying that, that it's pretty close to what they were actually like. Yeah, you know, yeah. they they believed what they were doing until they got found out as fraudulent. Yeah. But, and they even got involved in the. Um, the one in Epping, didn't they? Yeah. No, yeah. Um, they visit the to that. Enfield, yeah. Well, Enfield, no, yeah. 
that's actually they didn't. They only used the characters through the media company that they that now. No, they them. they showed up, didn't they? In the in real life, they showed up. Yeah, the poli- Yeah. Yeah, they they documented that the, they came the to Black, the. It was the Black Friar one. Oh no, I'm thinking of a different one then. Yeah, yeah I'm thinking to, of a completely the, different en, one. The Enfield one's not the right one. It's the Black it's Friar right, no, one, yeah, which was in. Oh, right, okay. It was in Doncaster. Don't do it. Yeah. Fucking do it. You get out my fucking I realm, you cunt. A, a McDonald's worker get knocked out by a drunk bloke in uh, Doncaster McDonald's because they'd run out of cheeseburgers. <laughs> right, boys, unfortunately, right. I have got to yes. depart. Yeah, Thank you so no much, worries. Dean, and we'll see you very soon. Uh, OGSocks.co.uk, code NAC. NAC. 20% off. Thank Jeffrey you for watching our Patreons. Stuff in the description down below. Hey! See ya! Peace! What happens? When it comes to it, in the, the, the thing. Oh, maybe they did. Oh! It's in the back, that is a light brown jacket. Uh, 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 uh